it's honestly amazing. I think, you know, I think one of my friends asked the other day, like, um, you know, did you dream of this? And I think I was just kind of like, you know, it wasn't a dream because I didn't think it was possible. Esme Magbagor, some really big, exciting news coming out recently um, about the World Championship and World Cup that is happening. What happened this week for you and your Australian national team? Obviously, the World Cup is in Sydney this year, um, and our team got announced this week. So, uh, 12 women's squad, um, which is really exciting. You know, we have a few new additions, obviously, um, with the addition of LJ, an Australian, great. Um, so, that's exciting. I get the chance to play with her again. I mean, not again, I haven't played with her, but yeah. She has kind of been a mentor to you. And I remember talking to her when you first got to the WNBA of how proud she is. What will this be like to play with Lauren Jackson as she completes her comeback at 41 years old? Honestly, amazing. I think, you know, I think one of my friends asked the other day, like, um, you know, did you dream of this? And I think I was just kind of like, you know, it wasn't a dream because I didn't think it was possible. So just to have her come back and, you know, see her put in the hard work and do what she did to get right for this, um, you know, selection process and, and the World Cup. It's really exciting. And yeah, I think we're all just very excited to have her on the team. You have been playing in the WNBA now three years, and that means leaving your friends, leaving your family for long stretches. What will it be like to play in the World Cup at home in front of your family? It'll mean a lot. I think, you know, I think that's just the life of, you know, female basketball as we travel around and, um, you know, obviously Anna's home, I mean, aren't at home as much, but just to have the World Cup, um, you know, in Australia, in Sydney, surrounded by family and friends is going to mean a lot, um, especially at the end of a WNBA season, you know, you get the chance to kind of go home and um, although it's straight back into basketball, it's at, it's, at, it's at home. So yeah, I'm excited. It's kind of cool because um, people have been Googling worldwide, Ezzy Magbegor, it's the number one trending topic for you in Australia. What does that mean to have so much support back home? Um, it means a lot, I didn't know that, um, but obviously, you know, coming, um, you know, to America, playing in the WNBA, I think, you know, there's, I think, four or five of us in the league, so I think we've got, you know, all of Australia behind us, um, you know, from our friends, coaches, teammates, um, so to have that support means a lot, because like you said, we are, you know, away from our family for a lot of the time, um, so to know that people are, you know, still supporting us from afar is, is really special. So you came to the WNBA very young. I think you were just 19 years old. And someone said to me this season that you should be a college senior right now in our US system of, of how universities work. What do you think you've done to mature quickly in this year in the WNBA, even though you're still so young compared to others? Um, I think just it's helped that I've you know, been playing professionally. I'm um, obviously before the WNBA, I was playing in Australia. So you kind of just, you know, don't have a choice but to grow up and but to mature because, um, you know, you're playing with professionals. So I think that kind of helped. And then obviously I moved away from home at 15. So I think just being, you know, away from home, being in a professional environment at a young age helps. And I'm just grateful I'm, you know, with the team I am with, you know, the Seattle Storm and just having great teammates to help me grow throughout the last three years. Tell me what did your family say and what was kind of the conversation or decision as a family when you're 14, 15 years old about, wow, I'm gonna have to chase this dream, but that means leaving home. What was that like? Um, honestly, it wasn't really a conversation. I think I just knew I wanted to go. Um, my parents support me like in whatever I do. So, um, you know, I, I was waiting for the phone call of, you know, whether I got offered the scholarship or not. So I knew as soon as um, I got that call, I was ready to go, I was prepared. And it, it was a hard adjustment at the start, just being, um, you know, getting used to being away from my family. Um, but I knew at the end of the day, that was the right, you know, the right place to be. So you got a scholarship to the Australian Institute of Sport. And what does that mean? That's a big honor in your country, right? Yeah, it is a big honor. I think, you know, there are a lot of pathways, um, you know, to get to the WNBA to, become um, you know an Australian Opal but I think that's a pathway that a lot of players have taken and for me it was just really important to get there and be surrounded by um, you know World Cup class athletes and kind of work on my game because I was you know raw as a 15 year old um, and looking back now that was just the best place for my basketball um, best place for me as a person just to grow and you know become more independent and obviously it led me to um, you know make junior national teams and then um, go on to, I guess, get that exposure to be drafted into the WNBA. 
Okay, give me a wake up call moment of your first moment in the WNBA where you were like, oh, okay, this is different. What was your wake up? You're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, honestly, I think it was pretty early on, probably just like even before the season started. Obviously my first year was a bubble year. So I think that training camp period, just, um, you know, how hot, hard and like competitive it was. And obviously playing against Stewie at practice. I think that was kind of like my wake up call moment. I was just like, you know, well, like I'm in the WNBA, I'm playing, I mean, with Stewie, but against her at practice. So I think I kind of just realized, you know, just, you know, where I was and how competitive the league was and, you know, what I, what was in store for me. Okay, so your first season is in the bubble and that was a um, horrific way to start your first year of the WNBA. It was really hard. But tell me when you finally got to Seattle and you've kind of gotten acclimated, what was the cool culture moment that you were like, oh, this is America, or this is something really cool or unique? Um, probably, like I said, just early on, I think, obviously I was drafted to Seattle and I think it was just the perfect place for me, just in terms of, you know, city, but teammates as well, and just kind of the culture and the organization. Um, so I think just, you know, knowing that you're playing with the Stewies, with the Sues, with the Jewels, but they're just, you know, people as well. And I understood that really early on because they were all, you know, just there to kind of support me as a rookie um, and just kind of be, be there for me and kind of help me just, you know, fit into the into the team and the league. Yeah. Tell me about your hometown. What, what was it like growing up? What, what is your hometown like? Um, and what's something cool that people don't know? Um, yeah, I grew up in Melbourne, uh, Victoria. So I was born in New Zealand, but moved to Melbourne when I was four or five um so pretty much grew up there um and grew up with three other siblings so it was just you know always a busy household always someone to play with someone to talk to and we all grew up playing basketball too so um you know mum and dad kind of had to drive us around victoria on a friday night everywhere um we had you know help from our teammates which helped a lot because um you know we were going everywhere so i think it was just always fun um, growing up and having, you know, someone kind of go through life with you. Um, so, so I'm very, very grateful in that I had that with my siblings, with my parents, with my friends. Um, and so I think that's something that's exciting, just, you know, not going back and playing um, the World Cup in my hometown, but just Australia as well. I think obviously Sydney's kind of close to Melbourne. Um, so just being able to have people from Melbourne come up and, you know, watch the competition and watch the tournament because it's going to be exciting for Australia in basketball. How did you get into basketball? You said all the siblings played, but what was the first thing that your family got interested in that? I think it's it was just something that, you know, kept us busy and obviously something that we were able to do outside of school. So, yeah, my siblings got into it. So my older brother and sister got into it first. and. Um, I think they just realized how much they loved it and how much of a community it was at the start because um, it was it was new for us like basketball was new for us and, and my parents as well but we played at a great club the Northern Rebels um, and it was just such a family you know based club so everyone knew everyone and everyone helped each other out so I think that was what my parents really appreciated and I think you know, they stuck with it. And I've been really, really lucky in that that's how it is with most of the teams that I've played on. Can you remember, think back and try to remember to a moment where someone came up to you and was like, you're going to be great. We want you to go to this. Like, what what was the discovery moment? Was there a moment? Like, when, when did you know you were something special? Uh, probably when I made my first state team. So... Um, we have like nationals in Australia, so I made, I didn't make the under 16 state team as a bottom ager, um, but I made it as a top ager the next year. So we had a tournament in um, Victoria in Geelong and that's kind of when I was scouted, I guess, by the head coach at the Australian Institute of Sport. Um, and so I think it was at that moment where I kind of realised, I guess, that maybe, you know, a lot of people saw potential in me. and. I think going to just like a regular school, I was always too afraid to say, you know, I want to be a basketball when I grow up because, um, you know, people just didn't understand. Like, they're like, you, we, you can't be um, a, bas a female basketballer and make a living out of it. So I think, you know, when I was offered the scholarship, I was confident enough to say, I want to be, I want to play basketball.
you know, I want that to be my career. All right, so before I let you go, we've got the World Cup coming up in Sydney, Australia. You'll be part of the Opals, a very famous Australian national team. You're gonna go from playing with Brianna Stewart, some of the top players in the country to probably playing against them. How hard will that be to turn the page in just a matter of really days once the WNBA season ends until you have to report to the World Cup team? Um, yeah, I think, you know, as athletes, we're kind of used to that just going from season to season, team to team. Um, I have played against Stewie and, you know, Jewel and some of my teammates at the previous World Cup when they weren't my teammates yet, but then I played against them at the Olympics last year. So, I mean, it's always, it's always nice to kind of seeing them in a different um, environment, but you just know when you get on the floor, you compete and um, obviously it helps just kind of knowing each other's games, but you know, I know Stewie's not gonna, you know, take a step back. She's Stewie, so. It is crunch time right now. What do you think is really special and working about Seattle? You guys are coming off a record 111 point game, the most assists in WNBA history. What's really clicking? Um, I think just the chemistry, um, you know, obviously um, adding Tina into our team was big. And so I think it's just great to see, um, you know, her kind of thriving in our team and just the way she plays, the way she moves. So I think just that chemistry is, you know, finally coming together. Um, and just, it's exciting to see that we just haven't consistently played our best basketball yet. Um, so I think we're, you know, hopefully gonna peak at the right time and hopefully get there, but it's just, you know, exciting to see the players that we have on this um, team and obviously coming off a big win against Chicago, just hoping to continue continue that. You're a WNBA champion already at a young age. You're an MVP over in Australia, the next big thing in Australian basketball as Imad Gabor. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Holly.